Hi folks, welcome back to the Model 3 Man channel. I'm Peter Levy and I have a topic today that is kind of a follow-up to yesterday's topic. So those of you who are following day by day, you'll know that we talked about traction control. So we're going to follow that up today and talk about the braking system. Now we made a minor reference to it when we talked about maintenance of Model 3. I referred to what you have to check on the brakes. But we've never actually dealt with the braking system in its entirety, which includes ABS, which includes a couple of cool, weird features I didn't even know about, and of course includes regenerative braking and questions and issues that relate to those. Now, at the end of the video, I've got a bit of a big announcement, and um, you may like it, you may not like it, I hope you will, but uh, we'll leave that till the end, and let's get on with today's tip of the day. So tip of the day, number 48, by the way, two to go before we hit 50, and it's all about braking. I'm going to walk you through all of the aspects of the braking system that the Model 3 uses, and some of the concerns and some of the cautions, but also some of the great things that are found in this braking system. First of all, ABS, anti-lock brake system, is an obvious central part of the braking system in Model 3. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if you jam your foot on the brake really hard out of panic and stress and anxiety about not hitting the car in front of you, it could result in a skid. In other words, if the wheel's locked up, you could just skid forward and end up hitting the object anyway. So what anti-lock brake system does is it monitors the point that each wheel is reaching. In other words, if it's about to lock up, it will release. So to a driver, that might feel a bit like a kind of a pulsation. Do not lift your foot off the brake if that happens. You will actually make things worse. Don't lift your foot and then push it again and lift it and push it again. You're actually working against the anti-lock brake system. How does it work? Well, it's constantly pulsing because wheels are reaching the point of about to lock up and then it will release them. Your job is to keep your foot pressed firmly down on the accelerator until you come to a stop. So anti-lock brake system works best when we press the brake, keep it down hard, and we don't take our foot off for any other reason at all. And the car will come to the stop in the shortest distance that is possible. That doesn't mean you'll avoid every accident. It does mean the car will do its best to slow you as fast as the conditions will allow. If you were following too closely, you're still going to hit the car in front of you. There is a brake indicator that appears in the status bar. When you turn your car on, that little red indicator that you see here will appear, but it should disappear when you get going. If it does not, you need to contact Tesla because there would be something wrong with your brake system. So two things here. Pumping of the brake pedal is terrible. It destroys the effectiveness of the anti-lock brake system. And two, Following distance is all important. Even if you're in traffic aware cruise control, there's a number between one and seven. So if you're on one, you're closest to the car. So keep that number maybe in, in between, somewhere around three, two or three, four. Following too closely could mean that the emergency braking system will not be able to stop in enough time and you will still have that accident you were trying to avoid. Now remember, we do have um, automatic emergency braking in the settings of our car. I've showed you that before, but here's the important part. Here's what the manual says about using that setting. Automatic emergency braking is not designed to prevent a collision. What? Why are we using it then? At best, it can minimize the impact of a frontal collision by attempting to reduce your driving speed. Depending on automatic emergency braking to avoid a collision can result in serious injury or death. So for those of you who had the idea that if you're using automatic emergency braking, you will never have an accident, think again, but it will minimize the impact. And what's more important, the front end of your car or your life? If something happens to the brakes and you have no way of stopping, there is another way. Press and hold the button on the gear selector the parking button on the gear selector 
and keep it held in and the car will come to a stop pretty rapidly. But the manual says, don't use this method to stop the vehicle unless absolutely necessary. So the implication is you might either be doing some damage to some part of the system, but it's not to be used if your foot brake is working, obviously. Now here's something I did not know before I looked into the subject. It's called brake disc wiping. I'm gonna read this from the manual because it says it clearer than I even could. Automatic brake disc wiping assists in maintaining brake responsiveness in cold and wet weather conditions. When such conditions are detected, the brake disc wiping repeatedly applies, and listen to this, this is so clever, an imperceptible amount of brake force to clear away the water on the brake disc surfaces. In other words, it just about puts your brakes on for you, makes, they just touch, and that cleans off the water and keeps the brake in a better position to be able to respond to some emergency braking. So this ensures that your brakes are responsive even during poor weather conditions. Brake disc wiping. Have you ever heard of that before? I'm not that technical when it comes to cars, so maybe it is a thing and other cars have it, but certainly it's good to know that the Model 3 has it. And then there's something called hydraulic fade compensation. And that? What is that? So once again, let me read the explanatory paragraph and then we can talk about it. Your vehicle is equipped with hydraulic fade compensation. This assists in monitoring brake system pressure, brake system pressure and ABS activity. For instances of lower brake performance, if lower brake performance is detected as a result of brake fade or cold or wet conditions, for example, you may feel the brake pedal pull away from your foot. That could be disconcerting. Detect some noise, obviously coming from the brakes, and notice a strong increase in vehicle braking. Continue to press the brake pedal without releasing or without pumping. Just brake as you normally would. So that's interesting. So the system is detecting lower than optimal brake performance and it's checking the pressure in the brake system and it's checking the ABS activity and it's compensating. I think that's amazing and I've not experienced it, but I can imagine that if you were going down a long, long, long hill and you were applying the brakes all the time, brake fade might come when they heat up too much, but this provides some compensation. So there it is, two interesting features that are not well known, brake disc wiping and hydraulic fade compensation. Now, of course, we come to the topic that Model 3 owners love most, and that is regenerative braking. The act of lifting your foot off the accelerator and as you lift, the car slows. And at the same time, it returns power to the battery. It charges the battery. So regenerative braking substitutes for us having to jump our foot across to the brake pedal, because if we do it with enough anticipation, if we're anticipating that we're having to stop, we can slow the car right down by using this regenerative brake process. And then of course, and this we have covered in another video, we'll look up there for a connection. Three types of behaviors. Once you have lifted your foot off the accelerator, you can allow the car to roll freely. It'll just hit something. You can allow it to creep. You take your foot off the accelerator, it inches forward, or you can go to hold. And the third option, hold, is what I have, because what does that do? Well, it allows you to have the car come to a complete stop only through regenerative braking. Lifting your foot off the accelerator, it'll stop completely. You look under controls, driving, stopping mode. Note that when you lift your foot off the accelerator, let's say you're on the freeway, the brake light will come on. The car treats your lifting of your foot and the consequent slowing of the car as braking and the light will indicate on the back of the car. How else do you know that? Look at the little avatar on your screen, on your touch screen. That picture of a car, when you're lifting your foot off the accelerator, you will see red in the tail light area of that little picture, that little avatar. That's very interesting, although they could make it a little bit more visible. They could make it obvious, but they haven't. It's pretty subtle. There are two situations in which regenerative braking will not be at its 
best or at its maximum. One is extremely cold weather and only when the car and the battery heat up does regenerative braking re return to its full strength. And the second one is that your battery is full. You've charged it. There's no point in putting extra charge back into the battery. So at those times, regenerative braking is not at its optimal. There are settings for regen. If you go into the touch controls, tap that little car on the left, tap on driving. There's a section that says regenerative braking. Choose from two levels, standard and low. Standard is obviously the one I use and 98% of people use. Low means there's hardly any regen effect. Now here's where that might be useful. If you're driving on very slippery roads, lifting your foot off with standard regen, the car might actually skid. If you have low regen in those risky, dangerous times, it's not likely going to cause your wheels to lock up and skid on the ice. So that's a situation where you might choose low instead of standard. One final thing, when your brake pads wear, and most of us will never experience this, but when your brake pads wear, there is a very thin metal strip that has been inserted into the pads. And when you wear down to that point, the brakes will begin to squeak. They'll begin to make v very audible noises. That's the indication that you need to change the brake pads right away. You're still not down to the metal, but you are down to the little indicator strip and that noise is your reminder to get down to the service center to have your brake pads changed and uh, consequently to be safe again. That's it. I hope that this has opened your eyes to some of the issues surrounding braking. Some of the things we thought worked one way may not work that way at all, like the emergency automatic braking. The one thrilling thing about the Model 3 is how fast it accelerates and how quickly we can go and how responsive it is. But all of that is worth nothing if we can't bring it to a stop as we need to. And a quick little reminder of how great it is to have over-the-air updates. Remember back a year ago or so when the critics were panning the relatively long stopping distance of the Model 3? And Elon got onto it with the software engineers and within two or three days the stopping distance had improved dramatically all through software and through over-the-air updates. This is the last item for this week. Um, I said I had an announcement. Here it is. We're on number 48 right now. We're going to get to number 50. Celebrate and then stop. Why? No, we're just going to put a temporary hold on tip of the day. And here's the reason why. I have, my head is bursting with ideas that I would like to get done. And this is absolutely eliminating my time during the week. I know the tip of the day should be one or two minutes, but I can't do that. And um, the fact that they're longer means I'm working on it almost all day to get the thing done. I'm going to put a hold on the tip of the day series and I'm going to deal with projects that I've always wanted to do. And I'm still going to be putting up episodes and they will be, you know, lengthy episodes. They'll be worth it, but they'll deal with subjects you want to hear about. For example, no, I don't want to give this one away, but you're going to be shocked. I'm going to be disagreeing with Elon and asking him to prove me wrong. Think on that over the weekend. So thanks once again. I will look forward to seeing you on Monday. Get to tip number 49 and I'm going to make these last two really important tips. Thanks so much again. Take care. Look after yourself and we'll see you next week. <laughs>